Ladies and gents, welcome to the video. Let me ask you, what do you get if you take a YouTuber, a load of leftover footage, and people asking them a lot, why on earth they think BF1 gunplay is good or detailed or whatever else that doesn't describe it as being bad? Well, you get this video. This is my hot take. As per the title and thumbnail, this is purely my opinion and helping to fill in some of the blanks, and this will likely be quite long and in depth, so there's your warning if you're not into that kind of thing. So I'm not saying at all that BF1's gunplay is better for everyone, nor am I saying that it's flat out the best way to go. Just why I, and those that like BF1 gunplay, feel this way. In fact, I put up a poll on Twitter asking which gunplay style people would prefer in BF6, and although it's very early on right now in the poll, BF5 is winning by a lot, then there's BF1, followed by BF4 and BF3. If you want to go and vote for yourself, then the link to my Twitter is in the description, and feel free to follow me as well, obviously. And so please agree or disagree today, that's the point. I want to hear in the comments whether you prefer this gunplay, BF5's gunplay, or in fact the gunplay of any other Battlefield title, and why. And so now, let's do this. I love and appreciate Battlefield 1's gunplay, for some of the exact reasons why some people hate it. One man's trash is another man's treasure and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I like that the gunplay isn't simple. I like that it's somewhat hard to make the guns do what you want. I like that there are requirements to use in the vast majority of the guns well. I like that you can't really use one kind of gun for almost everything. But the flip side take of that, likely you uses different wording, something along the lines of, these guns aren't reliable, I want the bullets to go where I shoot, etc. And so I say, that's cool, neither is wrong, uh, the key thing to alter about these discussions is telling other people that they're wrong for liking or disliking something. That doesn't solve anything. Do I think BF1's gunplay is casual, which is something that's thrown at the game a lot? No, not at all, I believe that that is incorrect by definition, but do I think you have to like it? Hell no, if you don't like it, then you don't like it. When we put this basically, that Battlefield 5's gunplay is great because you can just shoot at the enemy and the result is the bullets go there and they die. That's the very simple, casual layman's take, but we'll run with that right now. And it's valid because that's the vast majority of players. And I personally think that that style of gunplay is better for the wider gaming player base. For that relatively short-term, casual market that jumps from new game to new game, well, it for sure pulls in more players if done right and if the game is good. Battlefield 5 had too many failings to really make full use of it, but the gunplay was one of the few aspects that was widely praised. And of course, this can also apply to just your average player, long term, and indeed some very good players. And I actually really enjoyed it too, I, I appreciate both. But now having played both extensively, BF1's gunplay is miles ahead. Uh, it's not even close for me, despite me still liking BF5's. BF1's gunplay is deeper and more varied. You have to question exactly how to use a gun to make it good, not just basic recoil control and how many bullets to kill, plus maybe range. No, in BF1 you need to consider more so, what tempo to fire the gun at maybe, or the best technique to mitigate that recoil, or should I be stationary? Can I fire before aiming or will that hurt the accuracy? Can this weapon be burst fired or will the first shot spread multiplayer make it totally useless? And so much more. You have to actually master the guns and how they work, not just pick them up, shoot them a bit, and feel like you basically understand it straight away. Although BF1 does have some guns like that, because you need them as well, they are though fewer in number and often aren't as effective as a result. Something like the M90 7 SL Sweeper fulfilled that role and was pretty popular because of it. However, it basically wasn't as good as the trench variant, if you could fire the trench in semi-auto quickly and maintain your aim. And because I'm sure this would come up otherwise, and perhaps rightly so without clarification, I do do well in BF1. That could cause claims of me being biased towards it, which is obvious and to be expected. People like what they're good at generally, right? Top 2% KD on the game, and so I enjoy it. Okay, well, while that's true, I actually have a top 0.9% KD on BF5, better than on BF1. Yet I still prefer BF1's gunplay. It's a very basic measure I know, but it's a good one considering it's about whether you kill the opposition directly involving your gun usage. And it shows that I'm not applying performance bias, just actually looking at what I find fun to do and then analysing the reasons behind it. Now, I would not change BF5's gunplay, at least not a good version of it, um, as it's been slapped about and altered so much, like, dice, we really don't know what you were doing, uh, but a good version of it, people liked. I personally think you should make your gunplay simple or complex or something in between and then maintain it for the duration of the game. Tweak it to improve it and that's it. I think making BF1 gunplay really simple and reliable now would be stupid. And I think making BF5's gunplay really complex now would be stupid. Let people play what they initially bought and what they got used to, that is an important point to make. Now a side point is when people point to BF3 as having the best gunplay, which I have heard 
multiple times before, and if you enjoy that the most then awesome. But from a lot of picking apart analysis of that game from multiple sources and canvassing opinion, it seems at least as though it basically came down to mag dumping a lot of the time. And then BF4 also gets praised, but that was a whole lot of microbursting a lot of the time. Things that aren't really apparent to the casual player most of the time, but basically it's simplistic or a crutch mechanic or just essentially not balanced. BF1 avoids that issue far better, and nostalgia likely shines through when it comes to BF3 or BF4, hence why some people, not all, hold it up on a pedestal so much. Although the same could be said of BF1 of course, but I think if you release BF4 or BF3 gunplay now out of context into a fresh new game, it would be criticised, as times have moved on. But to our focus again, with what I've said so far, BF1's gunplay is not casual at all from what I can make out. The gunplay specifically, not the game overall and other features like manual spotting or whatever you want to raise, that's not the focus today, just the gunplay. It's not casual in my mind, I think that is entirely the wrong label. Of course it doesn't suit all preferences, but I find it very interesting actually that in many other games, not Battlefield, simplistic, easy to manage gunplay is often called casual, yet BF1 is basically the opposite and is still labelled as casual. It's odd really. It kind of gets seen as casual by some players because they feel like it's random, you can't hit the target, but that's not true. And we'll go into that in greater depth soon, but basically if you use the weapons correctly, you can make them more reliable and beat someone using the weapon incorrectly. Although other mechanics and factors probably do come into it being labelled as casual, and I can understand that, say the sweet spot mechanic specifically, is more casual than needing to straight up get headshots. I'm not saying it's good or bad, just that it's more casual. And casual is not always a bad thing by the way. But what about the fact that some high tier players, specifically on PC most of the time, point to inherent randomness in the way the guns fire in Battlefield 5? What has been deemed as, by then, unavoidable randomness, whether it be recoil or spread, we'll just mark it down today as a damage dealing difficulty modifier. Does that aspect not kinda put a dent into calls of BF1 gunplay being casual by comparison? If BF1 gives you clear ways to mitigate these issues, or is at least viewed as being tailored around them, whereas BF5 arguably isn't. Although when it comes to recoil at least, that is visual and gives you some kind of feedback, whereas BF1 a lot of the time it's about spread, but recoil does have its own issues too, which we'll come to later on. The truth is that randomness or spread or whatever is present in both. Factors that hurt your accuracy, be it spread or recoil, are necessary. Yes, necessary. Unless you're creating a laser shooter, and that's not really the ethos of Battlefield. And it's not really what most people want from Battlefield, even if they think they do. My evidence? Look at Battlefield 5 as the example. An at least assumed lack of recoil and spread in one build of the game resulted in people complaining about the Sten killing people from too far away, or MMGs literally lasering people down, or the STG being too good, or the Type 2A being too easy to use or whatever. A lot of people think they want super mega accurate weapons until it happens, and then they don't want it. So how do you balance that? Well you could go for lots more recoil, but that's generally unfun for a lot of players, and I mean a super extreme amount of recoil, or you could nerf range damage a lot, and then you create pea shooters, which the community hated, or on the flip side you can make other guns as easy to use as the ones being complained about, but then why would you pick the Sten if it's doing less damage and something else is now as controllable and has that range and whatever? So basically you have to pick, because you can't just complain about everything, which is what happens a lot of the time. Solutions aren't offered, just complaints. I like to give solutions where possible, and my choice is the depth, nuance and complexity of Battlefield 1's gunplay, especially when it's tailored towards rewarding those who actually use the weapons correctly, which honestly most people don't. And so with that in mind, which is it? Is BF1 casual because it's more complex, or less reliable, or more reliable, or what? There's no clear thread anymore when you consider all of this. It all starts to muddy the waters. I think the main point I'm getting at is that many players don't actually understand how to properly use all of the guns, and that's not an insult. The game doesn't really tell you very much, so for the casual player, it will feel like some of the guns really suck. Or of course, let me stress, you may just not like BF1's gunplay and that's fine. I will here highlight BF1's strong auto rotation, at least with controllers, that is more casual friendly. However again, that was actually reduced midway through BF1 
one, whereas BF5 did the opposite and reintroduced it. This again hurts that BF1 is casual by comparison argument. But either way, it doesn't make one better or worse than the other for you as an individual. But for me, it's not just about BF1's gunplay itself, or it's simply suiting my abilities or whatever else. It's also very much about the differentiation between guns, the unique feels, the alternate playstyles, the nuances and overall vast array of options. It can therefore be less about, if you choose not to just go for this of course, going for the highest DPS or highest rate of fire option or alternatively, lowest recoil gun. You can instead look for more specific strengths or wider versatility. BF1 created a situation where many people claimed for ages that the Hellregal was amazing due to a large magazine and being reasonably potent at close to mediumish range, while at the same time, the well-initiated, stat-minded or just very able players were happy to let those players have the Hellregal while they took advantage of the MP18's hip fire, or maintaining range with a medic rifle, or perhaps blasting down those Hellregal players with the auto-loading factory or whatever it may be. There was genuine depth to the decision making, and a true range of weapon difficulties, starting from easy to use and decent slash good, to skill cannons that rewarded an able player even more so in the right circumstances, but didn't provide much for someone who was inexperienced with it. Although the SMG-08 is still too good overall probably. That's then not to say that BF5 doesn't have have elements of this. There are for sure skill cannons in the game to a degree, and there is some nuance, but I feel BF1 has far more of that, and this is, at least partly, allowed to happen due to the very design of the gunplay that some people don't like. Perhaps the dream would be finding the middle ground between the two. Is that possible? I'm not so sure. I don't actually think trying to be all things to all men is a good idea, as shown with BF5 in large parts, aside from the gunplay. I think you should just pick one style and really nail it, rather than consistent screwing with it. Now some people have also raised before that the lack of 100% reliability of the guns also plays into being authentic, as it's World War 1. For me, the gunplay always comes first, so it's a bit of a non-factor, but I can see how that would be a positive for some people, and truthfully it would be kinda weird if my Automatico for example could reliably kill people from across the map. Anyway, moving on, the map design itself feeds into all of this. I won't go into too much depth here, but the map design and overall visibility of BF5 can appear pigeonholes what are effective weapon choices and ways to play and which ones aren't. BF1 doesn't do that, at least not to the same degree. It's more so how do you want to play, now work out how to do it. And I think that, putting it kindly, more maps in BF1 are good, whereas more in BF5 are not so good. Now just quickly here, let me state once again that yes, the sweet spot mechanic is more casual, because I maybe didn't stress that enough earlier, I totally get that, and it's down to the individual whether casual itself is good or bad, but I will also say that it helped Scout to remain more relevant regardless of platform, because expecting a super high percentage of headshots on console is just not going to happen for 99.9% .9 of players, when you can simply just use a semi-auto rifle, although this may create a problem with balancing on PC of course. Uh, however, it also did help to differentiate the Scout weapons far more so. Are the bolt actions in BF5 different? Well yes, but more subtly so a lot of the time. In BF1 there's absolutely no mistaking the Martini or the Ross or the SMLE or whatever. But how about we now quickfire some more specific examples of the depth of the gunplay and the mechanics you have to consider and get to grips with, which are again all going to be reasons why some people like BF1 gunplay and some don't. Well there's LMGs getting more accurate over time, there's that spamming certain medic rifles makes them fairly inaccurate, there's that some guns don't perform well firing while moving, or there's just the different options available. Something like say the RSC SMG, a totally unique feeling SMG, tiny magazine, super high damage, some things seem to be trashed by the majority but is super appreciated by a few and can be used to do real damage. Or the Machine and Pistol Experimental, a modified sidearm or whatever that fires two rounds per burst, I believe, as standard, and can be fired super quickly for frightening results, and it's a primary weapon. I like all of this stuff so much more, not just looking at things as another fast firing or slow firing SMG, or just another MMG that again requires you to be prone, or another bolt action with a little faster velocity and a little lower damage, I just don't care about any of that stuff anywhere near as much, and it's why the new guns coming to BF5 weren't as exciting for me and I think, again whether they knew it or not, for most players, when compared with BF1. I like the alternate fire modes and the varied things that they do in BF1, and the overall unique weapon options, the Burton's incendiary rounds, the general loot being able to be a semi-auto rifle or some kind of bolt action rifle, or do you want a scout option that's been modified to fire pistol ammo in a semi-automatic fashion, but you also want to be able to switch it back to being a bolt action rifle? Boom, you got it. The M1903 experiment
experimental does just that? Or do you want to run around with just a fully automatic pistol as your primary weapon? Boom, you got it. The Fromastop Auto does just that. BF5 has some of this, but to nowhere near the same degree, mostly just alternating the weapons between automatic and semi-automatic fire modes. I could go on and on, but I think I made my point. It's up to you whether you agree or disagree, and either is fine. Just be logical and respectful, and understand that casual isn't the same thing as being good or bad. Basically, BF1's gunplay is deep. It isn't all random. It has nuance and many factors to master. It isn't at all casual friendly in reality, even though some people think it actually is casual. But you don't have to like it, and that doesn't have to make it better for you. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leaving a like is honestly massive for me. Leave a dislike if you didn't like it. Consider subscribing if you're new here. I put out loads of content around Bassfield and new games coming in the future. And all the links to my social media, including Patreon, can be found in the description and my pinned comment. Here is the board of awesome for the epic people who already support the channel on Patreon. They're all absolute heroes and I love them all deeply and of course, often. If you want to join them on the board of awesome, the link to the Patreon page is in the description and my pinned comment. And with all that said, I'm Get Good Guy and I'll see you next time, laters. And my reward is taking it down over the course of a few minutes, picking up a multi-kill and of course, the phenomenal sight of a flaming enemy airship crashing to the ground below.